Hey guys, welcome back to Man Time. Today's episode, we are gonna try out the 61. Now this thing is way too much. Um, I may just call this the too much saw. It's too much duration on everything. It's too much exhaust. Um, it gets too much gas. It's just too much of everything. But uh, we've got some cool stuff to put on here. Let's see what we got here. They had a deal on uh, on eBay for twenty four inch bar and five sets of chain. Now the only problem is it doesn't fit. It's not even close. Do I need a steel? I mean, you'd think a Husqvarna would be made for a Husqvarna. Nope. Here we go again. Modifying a brand new bar that says Husqvarna on it. It doesn't fit a Husqvarna. I don't. I don't understand. Uh, so apparently, when you get one of these, you know, buyer beware. Um, it doesn't line up with anything. I mean, it doesn't line up with the oiler. It doesn't line up with the, uh, you know, adjustment hole. It just doesn't line up with anything. Let's see if we can get it. I mean, see? I mean, just nothing is lining up. It just, there's nothing, nothing working there. So, here again, um, I, I got a good deal on it, though. It was like 125 bucks. I don't even know what bar to get. If you know what Husqvarna bar to get for these older saws, Man, let me know, because I'm just having poor luck. But, anyways, uh, let's see here. Let's uh, see how this thing will cold start after uh, after sitting overnight. Um, I've done a few things to it here. Let's see, I replaced the pull cord. It was a little short. Um, replaced the fuel line, fuel filter. Um, got some shiny bits on there and some new wear parts and stuff like that. So let's see how it does here. Promising. frustrating as this is, it's not the end of the world. Um, if you've got your Dremel tool or whatever, um, you just need to extend these down. And from the last one I found out, you need to extend them down uh, almost to the bottom, almost to where it's coming through uh, the slot here. So we'll just start there. where you definitely want to wear a glove. So here's what we ended up with there. Um, you can see those holes are just a little bit elongated. Now, the other problem is this oil hole. It's got to come like all the way up. So I'm just going to change out bits here. And I've also got to 
um, make this a little bit wider in here because it doesn't slip over those shoulder bolts. Alright, the other uh, advice I can give you here is test fit often. Um, you don't want to go over sized where then you have to use um, something to kind of fit it on there. So let's see how we're looking. Yeah, this is a place where I definitely use gloves. Okay, so, oh, hello. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> I got lucky there. Yeah, I got real lucky. Uh, you guys see how that's fitting? It, um, it's nice and snug. Okay, so then, let's see, our oil port is way up here. See, this is the other problem. Uh, I mean, it is like, it's actually going to be overflowing into the chain this way, and you know through this through this port here so I've got to extend this almost all the way up yeah almost all the way up alright so here's what we're looking at we're looking at this oil hole on the bottom it actually comes in from this way I'm gonna make it go in from the other way and now I have to burn my clothes my wife will never let these go into the washer. But here's what we ended up with. Um, you can see there now the oil port uh, flows all the way from the edge down in. Again, oil port all the way from the edge down in to that hole. Um, and we've got our recesses here so it'll fit that adjuster. And we've lengthened that. Now, I don't know why... Anyways, let's put it back together. Cut some. So tragedy averted. Um, that's a, that's a pretty good deal though. I got this thing on eBay. Um, I mean, it's I guess it was just listed as Husqvarna bar. You would just assume. I guess you should never assume. But I mean, I don't think you know whoever was selling it was being malicious and listing it as a 24-inch Husqvarna bar. It was way better. I wanted to get a 28 for this saw. Um, I actually wanted to get the. Uh, um, Samara light bar, but, uh, you know, all right, so what's out of the adjuster, and this is going to go tight. <sighs> Chain brake tool coming in handy again. I mean, is it just me that finds this just a little comical? I mean, I just went through this with that other chain. Um, so, all right, now I need, I need to add at least, I think I'm gonna add a full tooth and a link. So let's do that. Let's get a tooth and a link here disconnected. Pretty neat, you don't need to get like master links to get this to work. I always thought you needed a master link. And I mean, you might. This might not be the OSHA approved method for doing this. Alright, so here's my, here's my donor chain. 
I need to figure out what size fits so I can get some more made up. It's going to be the right size. I need to add, I guess I need to add a link here, and then a drive, another drive, and then a link here. I mean, that's one other thing. Um, you don't actually need, you don't actually need tooth after tooth after tooth. Um, but see, now I've got this and this. I'm going to have to get another link off of this one. You know what I did see, though? I saw that this actually has an anvil on it here. I mean, so I could... Yeah. The way that the farmer showed me was just to you get them on there like that and then just kind of hammer them down. And that's all I'm going to do. Why? Because that's easy and it works. See what we got going on here though? So we've got our chain, we had to add an extra drive link to it and now we've got two links. We've actually added like a full drive length there. And you can kind of make sure everything's going back the way that it's supposed to. See, I mean, you can see there's plenty, there's plenty of rivet left there. I mean, I was kind of thinking about that too. You know, there wasn't going to be enough rivet there. Why not just buy a new chain? Uh, but in this case, I did buy a new chain, and it just doesn't fit. So, There's just plenty of rivet there, still usable. Yeah, I mean that's not that's not coming off of there. You can see that is a that is a quality repair. You've got an extra link in there between the teeth, but that's not going to affect anything. Look at there, plum, and not a ding on it. I mean, it didn't, that didn't even phase this hammer. You gotta have a good hammer for that. Okay, let's try it again. Isn't that funny how things work out? I mean, essentially I was training myself uh, in that last video, or the one before last, or whatever it was, um, for this situation, you know? And that's part of what man time is. This channel, to you, um, I run into a lot of things that go wrong. I mean, that's just part of life and part of life on the farm here. And you've got to adapt, figure out a way, you know, and overcome. Let me make sure my, yeah, I mean, my adjuster was all the way, all the way at the back of the threads. I really didn't want to go any farther than that, so. Um, all right. Let's see if we can get it on now. I've got I've got at least a you know full thread engagement there. Or a few. I mean it's all the way. Yeah, I think it's fine. We'll soon find out, won't we?
idle without the chain moving and start getting this chain lubed up and kind of broke in with the saw. Damn, that bar looks good, doesn't it? <laughs> and it even sits up on this dog. I mean, this is just a well-designed system here. But, I mean, don't Husqvarna bars fit Husqvarna chainsaws? Anyways, I, I guess it was just a little too tight. The brake does actually work. Uh, so, I don't know. I guess it's just maybe because it's dry. Speaking of which, I need to add more bar oil while I'm in here. Well, I've got some, uh, I've got some hard and some soft wood here. This, uh, this old sweet gum is, is pretty rotten, but we'll, we'll just, we're trying it out. We're on our fifth heat cycle here. Let's see if she starts up again.
That was uh, first time in the wood on the Husqvarna 61. I'm actually really happy with it. I'm really disappointed in the Husqvarna chain. Um, it, it just started blowing sawdust there, as you probably saw. I mean, that isn't chips. And I, I, I didn't hit anything. I mean, I'm looking at the chain. It looks nice and sharp, but it almost looks like the top of the chain is or the top of the cutter is actually kind of rolled over. I don't know if you can see there. I mean, the chain isn't damaged. Hmm. Yeah, it's just not... Oh, it's kind of a... It's a square grind. That's what it is. It's a square grind. Well, let's fix that. We'll put a round grind on it. And make it, uh, make it better. But, uh... Yeah, other than the uh, other than the chain, I mean, this thing's running pretty good, huh? Oh yeah, she's good and warm. But I mean, uh, I don't know. I think I'm just really disappointed in the chain. It seemed like it got up there. I'm still running it rich. Uh, obviously, um, it was four stroking in the cut there a little bit. That's that's where I want it until I get a couple tanks through it. It's still going to be building compression, of course. Um, and, and this was all that uh, Italy Tech, I mean, Italy Tech cylinder, Italy Tech piston, and 
um, whatever that Italy Tech ring is that comes with it. So, you know, I'm, I'm just kind of feeling it out at this point. But anyways, that's going to do it for today on Man Time, guys. Get out there. Have me some Man Time, too.